Hello, my name is Kanan Maslamani. I am doing my PhD in Simulation Techniques and Scientific Computing Group in University of Siegen, Germany. In this video, I present my project on simulating an electrodialysis desalination process using modern supercomputers. Motivation to my project is drinking water scarcity. Drinking water, which is essential for all life on Earth, but most world population are suffering from inadequate clean drinking water, either in the form of physical water scarcity, which is due to lack of natural water resources, or economic water scarcity, which is due to lack of infrastructure. To solve this problem, let's look at the amount of water available on Earth. Even though two thirds of our planet is water, only 2.5% is available as fresh water, and rest are salt water. In this 2.5% fresh water, only 0.3% as freshwater lakes, rivers, and 30% as groundwater. In most countries, the groundwater is declining due to poor water management. Since seawater is available in abundance, seawater desalination is the best way to solve this problem. Seawater desalination process has six stages. At first, the water is pumped from sea and filtered to remove solids, bacteria, and viruses. Then, salts are removed from seawater using a desalination technique. The wastewater brain output is dumped back to sea and the potable water output is chlorinated and minerals are added to enhance taste. Finally, the water is stored and supplied to population. Here, the energy is mostly spent in desalination stage. There are several desalination techniques. The efficiency of those techniques are usually measured in terms of electricity consumption and freshwater recovery rate. The graph shows different desalination techniques and their efficiencies. A membrane-based electrodialysis is the best available technique which is efficient in both energy and water recovery rate. To simulate electrodialysis process, we need to understand its working principle. Let's consider an electrolyte between anode and cathode. The negatively charged anions move towards anode and the positively charged cations move towards cathode. Now place a selective ion exchange membrane, for example cation exchange membrane, which allows only cations to pass through and reflect anions. Next to this membrane, place anion exchange membrane, which allows only anions to pass through and reflect cations. Due to this arrangement, the concentration of ions increases between the membranes, resulting in concentrate channel. Now arrange multiple of such cation and anion exchange membranes alternately to each other. The ions are collected in one channel and removed from other channel, resulting in alternative concentrate and dilute channels. Between the membranes, the spaces are used to keep them apart to create flow channel. The spaces provide mechanical stability, influence pressure drop across the channel, and also influence ion transport through membranes. There are two major spacer types, woven spacer and non-woven spacer. And design of the spacer plays a vital role in optimizing this process. The illustration shows different spacer geometry parameters. We developed the pressure drop prediction model for both woven and non-woven spacers by running hundreds of simulations for a given parameter set and published it on Journal for Desalination. This is how the fully assembled electrodialysis module looks like. To simulate this process, first we need to identify different physics involved in this process. In flow channel with spacer, the incompressible Navier-Stokes equation describes the fluid flow. The Maxwell-Stefan equation describes the self-diffusion and interaction of ions and water molecules. In membrane, the nernst planck equation describes the diffusion of ions. In entire domain, the electrodynamics are modeled by Maxwell equations. Finally, all these different physics are coupled with each other to enable fully coupled simulation. Simulating this system requires efficient numerical method for which we chose lattice Boltzmann method for flow channels with spacer and discontinuous galerkin for membranes and electrodynamics. High computational power is required to resolve all effects. For this, supercomputers in Germany are used. Finally, the efficient simulation code framework is required to couple different numerical methods. For this, we deploy the simulation framework called APES, Adaptable Poly Engineering Simulator developed by our group. This framework contains several sub-packages like pre-processor seeder, different numerical solvers, and post-processor harvester. They all revolve around a central Trilium library which is based on Octree data structure. The framework is end-to-end -end parallel and highly scalable on supercomputers. Let's see how simulation workflow look like. The STL files defining boundaries are given as input to mesh generated tool seeder. It generates the fluid mesh and dumped the data to disk in Trilium format. The fluid mesh is given as an input to solver like Musubi with proper flow parameters, initial and boundary conditions. The solver dumps the simulated data to disk in Trilium format and it is converted to visualization format like VTK with Pros Processor Tool Harvester. The animation shows the transport of ionic species around the spacer channel between the membranes with the external electrical force. We can also simulate the transport of sodium and chloride ions along this channel due to pressure drop and also towards membrane 
due to electrical force resulting in dilute and constant channels. Thus, we can use our simulation framework to simulate electrodialysis process instead of conducting several laboratory experiments which are time consuming and expensive. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, please like and share.